I just had a great conversation with Dr. Marcus Bilin, who's featured on today's episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And we got a little into it in one point. It was really interesting because we both really got, not with each other, but um, you can see passion in both of us. When I, I talked about and I brought this, this thing that I've heard up as an administrator is that that's why you make the big bucks. And uh, I think we got really kind of animated about it because it, it's a it's almost like a dehumanizing thing. And I think a lot of times, you know, we don't want educators talking talked about poorly when they pour their hearts out and they want to do the best job they can. And sometimes, uh, you know, being a teacher is a really thankless job. And uh, I was thinking about that sometimes that we hear ed- administrators hear that that comment. And it's like, here's, this is why it's okay to crap on you. This is why it's okay to make you feel bad. And, you know, I think sometimes when you're an administrator, you have to make really tough decisions and, you know, things are really hard and you can stay haunted with them and it's tough. And I think that in education, I'm always about how we work together. And I've said this before, it's not about top down, bottom up. It's all about all hands on deck. It's the only way we move things forward is that when we, see ourselves together as part of a team. And just like there's a teacher shortage right now, there's an administrator shortage. A lot of people don't want to go into those positions because um, they don't see the benefit in that. And I I will also tell you on the other hand too, that probably my favorite job ever was being a principal. And I loved being a vice principal. We kind of go in between uh, both those things because uh, I just love doing it. I love connecting with people. And you do have those moments. And, you know, anyone who's listening to this, uh, who who's ever thinking about being a minister, you do have some of those tough times where you feel like no matter what you do, you're doing it wrong. And sometimes you feel the community's against you, the staff's against you. And the reality of it is sometimes it's like one or two people, but it feels like the world is falling in on you. And I had those moments. I had some really tough times as an administrator, really tough and, you know, And then I would go into a classroom and see kids and they would connect with me and remind me why I did what I did. And I think that um, just like teaching, being an administrator is a really tough job, but it's, it's an awesome job and it has an impact. And so when you, when you listen to Dr. Bielan talk about this, uh, we talk about some of these struggles that we have uh, had as an administrator, some of the things that, you know, really, really, you know, tested us. But I also think that he gives some really great examples on like the impact you can have as an administrator. And, you know, you might be listening to say, well, I don't ever want to be an administrator. Um, I don't ever, you know, that's not for me. And I'll tell you, at a point in my career, I had no interest in being a principal. I actually, when I became a vice principal, uh, I actually applied for a job on a whim. I had no interest. I never saw myself uh, being an administrator and literally until the day I accepted a job. And so I think that, whether you want to be or not, it's kind of interesting to listen to an administrator perspective, kind of hearing about the role. And we talk about some of the downs, but there's a lot of ups. There's a lot of great opportunities there too. And I think that's really powerful. But even if you are saying like, you know, no way, I think it's great to hear some of the different perspectives because no matter our roles, we want to, you know, understand that we're trying to do what's best for kids. And Dr. Bielan said, you know, nobody wants to show up to work you know, doing a bad job. And that includes our administrators, includes our teachers. It's every person in our schools. Like the majority of people I've ever connected with education just want to help kids. And I think he just provides a great reminder and gives you a beautiful example of what greater leadership can look like. So I love this podcast. It was really great to talk to with Marcus and I know you're going to love it too. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos, another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And today I have principal leader, Dr. Marcus Bielan, and uh, we're going to just talk leadership and stuff. I, I actually, you're going to check out his website below. I was checking it out before we we're having a little bit of conversation. Basically, the guy's won every award <laughs> ever already. <laughs> I, all I do is have award winners on my show and just to make me feel like crap because I've never won anything, just so you know. I actually, when I was in grade, just so you know, when I was in grade three, I won fastest skipper in in my class. And that's that was it. That's basically it. 
<laughs> so obviously, you know, other than that, I haven't really done anything, but you just, you know, awesome guy. Uh, you, you know, you've been recognized for your work. Uh, I, I love your stuff. Uh, people check out his podcast, but uh, Dr. Belin, and you said I could call you Marcus, so I want to make sure we're cool with that. Yeah, uh, so cool. no one gets mad at me after, but it, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's an awesome uh, opportunity to like sit down and talk with you, just hang out, get to know you. I always love the. I actually, I, I I hope people appreciate the podcast. I always love the before the podcast. It's like kind yeah. of my favorite part, just getting to know people. Uh, you know, and just kind of talking off wax. So, uh, thanks for being on the podcast. Can you just tell everyone a little bit about who you are, what you do today, and kind of how you got to that point? Yeah. Uh, well, first off, um, I am, I'm humbled. I appreciate the ability to, to be able to sit here and connect with you. You've done uh, some awesome work uh, out speaking in, in, in the circuit books, things of that nature, and just connect. You can hook me up with one of those awards, man. You say, like, give one to George. <laughs> I'll do that. Let's okay. you on the podcast. We'll do some podcast exchange. <laughs> You uh, know, like, who knows? Like, Maybe we'll work on something <laughs> down the road, but you know, anything's possible. Right. So, um, uh, I, as you stated, like I serve as, as principal of Huntley High School. Um, I, regardless of what I do and, um, and the and the position and title that I hold, like I just I love kids. Like I love being with kids, uh, being able to watch them grow. Uh, it is so cliche, but it is the most rewarding uh, mm -hmm. job ever, um, and. Uh, to whatever capacity uh, you serve kids. Um, but I uh, have been in education now for 12 years. Uh, 10 of those years have all been in administration. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I did. I taught for uh, two and a half or two years um, as a fifth and sixth grade social studies teacher, but also had the fortunate ability, uh, Concept Schools, which is a charter school management company, took a chance on me straight out of mm -hmm. high school or straight out of college uh, to, to educate 150 young people. And I did it for a couple of yeah. years. I started to learn a lot more very quickly because I was, I was telling you like, before we started recording this, like I'm so hungry for knowledge right. and what's in front of me. And every time I'm, I'm hungry and I eat, there's just more food that comes. I'm like, okay, I gotta eat more. So I'm super <laughs> aggressive at like what I'm able to learn. Yeah. And uh, it kind of threw me into the realm of, of uh, starting a high school, started a middle school as a teacher, started a high school as a dean of students um, wow. as the school grew. So um, I love loved being uh, a dean of students that kind of propelled me into becoming an assistant principal and then a principal of a, a large high school. So uh, that's that's what I do in terms of my mm my day-to-day -day, every day. Um, I also serve as the president of Illinois Principals Association, uh, which is 6,000 members strong. Yeah, we ain't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but that, uh, uh, an organization of just leading, uh, yeah. leading individual school leaders, you know, 6,000 across the state, super strong, but just the network, man, has is, is been crazy. Awesome. And the people in which I'm connected with is, is kind of what got me to being where I am. So like also there's not even just awards. You're also mm -hmm. president of the, that's incredible. That's like, that's, that's pretty quick. I, I got, you know, when you're talking about this, so I remember writing a blog post years ago and um, basically the number one thing I look for in people when I was hiring them, this is something that is what I call the sponge factor, right? Mm -hmm. so if I shared information with you and shared ideas with you, would you just like, would you block them or would you actually like absorb them and, and not, not necessarily just do what, you know, what I asked or do anything, but do I see you learning? And, um, I always think about like, so you and I were talking before, I'm like super into basketball as a ref for several years. And basically what would happen when we would ref basketball is, you know, when you get to a certain level, there's an evaluator who's sitting in the stands, right. And they're watching you, they're evaluating you as you go. And basically you go in, you got like a 10 minute halftime, short amount of time. And the evaluator basically rips you apart for 10 minutes. Cause they don't, <laughs> oh, they don't God. have time for, they don't have time for compliment sandwiches. Yeah. There's only like 10 minutes. Right. So they're like, you yeah. did this wrong. You did this wrong. I need you to try this. I need you to try this. So the refs that actually always were considered the best who would do the best were the ones who would take the feedback at halftime and apply it in the second half. But if you were just kind of like, you know, I need to think about this, you know, I need to like contemplate and stuff like that. That's where like usually what kind of help people back. Right. And, you know, like a lot of times it's like a stall tactic. And I, so like, I, I always think about that 
And it was like, sometimes we would talk after the game and see, you know, I tried that. It didn't work for me. I, I don't really see the benefit of that, but they were mm -hmm. appreciated that I at least tried as opposed to like, you know, like I already know what I'm doing. So I don't really, so it's probably why, like when you talk about that, that, that hunger for learning, that's the first thing I thought of. And like, when you, you know, when you, when you went to becoming a, like an administrator so quickly after teaching, like what, did you have any struggles with that transition or like how, how was that process? Um, I did have uh, some struggle uh, yeah. only because I, my connection and my relationships that I built with the students in my classroom and with the families in the community of, of Peoria. Um, I had to have some tough conversations, which has been my biggest challenge. Cause I, I'm a, I like to, go out and make people happy. Like, I just, I just want you yeah. to be happy. Like, what do I need right. for right. you to be happy? Especially working with kids. Like if this is the only thing I'm, let's remove all the barriers. What do you need to be happy? And so while that's a, a pro for me, it's also a con because I had to have those tough conversations right. with some of my families to say, Hey, like I'm a Dean, right? Like I, I give discipline. So don't call and say, why am I doing this to your child? Like, it's not about that. I, I don't, I don't want right. to do these things, but like, <laughs> there's also policies and procedures that we have to be able right. to follow. And so, right. and the same with teachers, um, figuring out what that balance in that relationship uh, needed to be in order for me to be effective in my job, me to be able to support teachers and to be able to support kids in a moment in which they can learn, mm -hmm. not do it again, but I can have some meaningful conversations to help curb that behavior, right. um, you know, for them to be successful. So that was, that was man a big challenge for me. Um, but also being a young administrator, when I took over as principal at Huntley High School, uh, there was a teacher who I was introduced to within the first couple of days, uh, went up and started talking with them. And I'm like, man, you know, how long you been teaching here? He was like, I've been teaching here for 32 years. Right. <laughs> OK, well, I'm 31. <laughs> right. Like you've been teaching here just as long right. as I've been alive. But it wasn't immediate. Oh, my goodness. I'm afraid it was whoa, I get to learn from you. I have a lot yeah. to learn from you. Like teach me what I don't know from a teacher's perspective because you have a lot of historical perspective. Yeah. Um, and and that for me was, uh, was eye-opening. So I utilize that to my advantage. Um, yeah, and I, I think that that is like, I think that's such a powerful way to look at it because it, it could be easy like, well, you know, you have been teaching for a while. But, you know, I am the principal, so I have to call the shots as opposed to saying like, hey, you know, every person in the space, whether and I, I, I really I hate when people say like, well, you shouldn't be doing this because you haven't taught like at least X amount of years. I'm like, ex like, mm -hmm. where where are we in a space that, you know, like imagine a new teacher saying like I have something to offer in a staff meeting and saying, well, you know what? Let's come talk to me in five years and then we'll listen to you like mm -hmm. that. You'd be considered a bully and i see that stuff on twitter all the time and it's just like oh, okay whatever right and it's like kind of seeing like hey we should be looking at that we can learn from any space uh at any time no matter a role right and i think some of the best superintendents some of the best administrators um that i've ever connected with and what i tried to emulate was they leaned on teachers uh they leaned on their staff to learn from them to like better serve people as opposed to coming in those positions and say, well, I'm in this position. So obviously, like I know it all, right? Yeah. And and that is where I think it served me well to be able to sit back. Um I I had a, another teacher in my building who's been there for 25 years. And in my first right. year, I just walked in. I'm like, okay, I'm struggling with this. Second year, I think I struggled right. struggled with right. a situation. And she was like, Marcus, can I can I be who I need to? Can we just be two right. people? Titles titles aside, and I felt right. like, to be honest, I felt like I was getting cussed out. I'm like, man, right. like I'm I'm really that bad. But I like I needed that understanding from a different perspective with a whole bunch of historical, with a whole bunch of yeah. age and knowledge, and knowing that she was invested in my in, in my success. And it wasn't Marcus. Hey, I'm going to sit down and praise you for all the things that. Has, has happened, but I'm going to give you a different perspective that I just didn't know because I didn't right. know I needed to look at that piece. So I value the staff in my building um, to be able to run a building that large. Like you have to be able to uh, trust people to do right. what we need to do for kids. And that's hard when you don't know who are the people that you need to trust. So I got to trust everybody. <laughs> right. 
right, um, right. and with that comes some positive and some negative. But I, I wholeheartedly believe I got a just an awesome team. Yeah, and that like that, I think for me, the thing that I always try to do, and I, I still try to do, is I give you trust until you lose it, as right. opposed to you have to earn it with me, right? Because mm-hmm. I think I think to me um, that you you do have to kind of put people in that, like you know. I think a lot of times people live up to the expectations that you have for them. And if you start off with low expectations, they'll live up to those. And and that's, yep. that's part of the issue, right. As opposed to setting them high. And so I, I, I do, you know, appreciate that because, you know, especially working at such a large school that, or a school, um, you know, there's no way that you can know everything that's going on and you have to have trust in people. So like, what, what are some of the challenges of like working in a school that big? Right. Cause like, I, unless you're, unless you're doing something really incredible, I'm guessing you don't know every single name of a student, but you probably, but you, you know, I'm sure you try, right? So like, what are some, what are some of those, what are some of those difficulties that you have, or like maybe some of the challenges that you might face with a school that, that, that size? I think that's the biggest part, right? Like I came from a a charter school that was only 300 kids, man. I knew name, I knew your first, middle and last name, your mom, your dad's name, and (laughs) what you like to do on the weekends. And they knew all about me, you know, and, when you get to a school of 3000, it's just, it's virtually impossible to know names. And so I tell kids like, Hey, tell me your name. Okay. Do me a favor. Like this, is the test. When you see me in the hallway, like just ask me like, Hey, Dr. Beeland, like, what's my name? Like, Ooh, give me something to associate it with. Like I'm trying yeah. to learn. I probably know a good two to 300 names, like right off bat when I see them because I've been engaged with them at some point, or I've seen them out and I'm able to associate But the problem with that is every kid has a story. Every kid has a journey. And some of these stories and journeys that kids have gone on are like amazing to me. Like I actually would rather sit and talk to one of my students than read a book that I get to choose. I don't get to choose the students that are in my building. I don't get to choose them as a story that I want to read. Like if I have the opportunity to connect with them and hear about them, then I can learn how to better serve them. Have populations in my building that are underserved in a predominantly white community and that's not a negative but like man i want to figure out how they feel because they're growing up in this not really knowing how to process but like what can i do in this building to help you be more connected to to feel more included and in order to do that it's not putting out a survey it's not getting together just a focus group wow that's better but like i want to hear your individual stories of what can what can we do better how can we grow so that's the biggest challenge of when you make a decision, that impact is not going to be a hundred. That impact of or outcome of that story is not going to positively affect a hundred percent of everyone. So the decisions that I make, there's going to be either positive or negative outcome. It's just to what percentage is that positive or negative? Am I eighty right. twenty? <laughs> am I ninety ten? Or am I ninety nine? This failed and one percent. Like I got a small. I got one percent that's happy. Well, yeah. You know, you know, so. There, there's, there's something that like I'm, I'm thinking about as you're sharing this too, is um, a lot of times when people have like large, small staff, whatever, and they're like, we want to build relationships, right? And then they come up with some like weird icebreaker activity. And I, I might be stepping on some toes right now. And like, I, I am like, I am out that room as soon as like, I am out. <laughs> I, I gotta go to the bathroom. Like, don't make me feel awkward. I don't like this yeah. stuff. Right. And I think sometimes the best way we could just get to know people is just have, just talk to each other. Like, Hey, you know, just like, you know, like, you know, just have conversation, make room for that, you know, space, like, you know, maybe extended breaks, you know, where you can just like have like refreshments, food, you know, eating over that. And like what you just said, you know, it's like, it, like, the if you if you don't want to know me do an icebreaker activity that's literally <laughs> you're gonna know me the least right but just sitting down and talking to people whether it's kids or whether it's adults like i i hate i hate icebreaker activities right uh yeah. so i don't know i don't know what you, what you think of my i saw i i, I felt I, you felt me when i said it i i did and so to kick <laughs> off the school year um yeah. i i did a uh man i did a keynote for a, a charter school network and uh The one thing that I told them, I was like, man, we have had kids out of the building for 18 months, right? We don't know what kind of craziness they've lived through. 
Right. And some of you all are like excited, like, oh, we get kids back in the building. And then they ca- walk into your classroom and they sit down to a worksheet of like, what's your favorite candy? What's your favorite snack? Right. Like, OK, right. ask a person next to you what they right. did over the summer. Like, who cares right. about that? Like right. kids just want connection. And sometimes that icebreaker activity is just literally going in with no agenda, which some people are like, I got to have a lesson plan. Totally. Well, make the lesson plan to just talk yeah. and have some conversation like and that don't just break the ice shatter it open that up and let the floodgates happen so we can know how we can best serve and connect kids like don't george don't get me fired up man (laughs) right yeah no that's i i'm like i'm all for it i just i yeah i think sometimes we 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 actually like know the easiest path and we're like let's complicate it let's actually make it more difficult and like yeah. no just talk to each other like it's yes, just, that's it right and maybe and maybe some people have trouble talking to people and you know what's not going to help them icebreaker activities it's going to make them feel more awkward right so it's yeah. just something if you tied to an icebreaker like man go get you yeah. a deck of cards that are sentence starters and just right. throw it out there and then let the but you got to be okay with just awkward silence. It's like, all right, cool. We're going to yeah. sit here until somebody yeah. participate. Like, <laughs> I, but, unfortunately, unfortunately I would awkward leave. I, that's a, that's always been my issue. I just, I don't know. It's, it's always kind of just made me feel weird. I don't know. Anyways, that's my own, that's my own little icebreaker phobia that I had to like kind of talk through. Hey, well, so let's talk you, about basketball. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think, <laughs> hey, you know, yeah, I could, if you said that, that, okay, maybe that's an icebreaker. I'd be all over. So, <laughs> Hey, so when, 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 uh, you're working at Illinois, you said you're president of the Illinois principal association. I actually remember, cause I remember reading that, I think in your Twitter bio, um, yeah. what, like when you hear from other principals, um, what's some like, and this is being aired in 2022. Um, what's some of the things that you can see is like, like and I, I'm, I'm guessing pretty much everyone in education that listens to this might even have their own thoughts on this. But like, what's some of the common, you know, things that they're dealing with right now that they're they've been struggling with over the last little while? Uh, I mean, on the on the heels of a pandemic, um, mm-hmm. just constantly going at a rate that, to be honest, is just unsustainable. But when yeah. we say it's unsustainable, like we're still sustaining, like we still right. are. We've had bad days and our our success rate in everybody's life right now of making it through bad days is 100 percent. Right. Like we still here, like we get another day to give a go at it. And yes, are there are there people, uh, principals leaving a profession, making plans to lead a profession? Absolutely. But there are people who are like, yep, we're going to figure it out. We've been faced with challenges. We know that we're all going through this, but we got to figure it out. Um, and I think the biggest challenge right now is not only finding that balance of self-care for us as school leaders, right. but um, figuring out how we support our staff, regardless of the size of our staff. Like yeah. we can sit and we have the choice to sit in the office, close the door and say, hey, I'm in a meeting and really not be. I don't know who who does that, but it could happen. Right. Mm-hmm. A teacher can't say, hey, I don't want kids to come in here today. I don't want to deal with them. Hey, teacher, take everything that you're dealing with, roll it into a classroom. And like you just got to deal with that and kids. So it's trying to figure out, man, how do I how do I help and support my staff? And I think that that is the biggest challenge, because I again, back to that question of how do I lead a bill? I have to trust them. Well, I have mm-hmm. to trust that they're also taking care of themselves and doing what they need to do. And am I giving them the space to be able to do that? Um so when I hear from principals across the state, like we're all dealing with something at varying levels, whether you have a small or large school, it's still a level of balance uh, that we have to 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 learn to walk through and and kind of figure out. Uh, I'm going to say something. I'm actually curious your thoughts because it might be because because I actually you, you said something I think is really important is that we're like we're sustaining an unsustainable level. And I think that that to me is. I think administrators, I, I know that I was guilty of this and probably in some ways you are too, is that we tend to in admin give everything to everyone else and we don't even know when we're depleted, right? And then it just boom, hits you, right? And yep. I think like I and I don't want to say like, oh, administrators do that and teachers, teachers do it too. They do it with kids and it's like the same thing, yeah. right? It's it's like, you know, just maybe different people. One of the things that I, I've suggested to people, because I actually had someone who reached out to me and said, like, hey, I'm just starting off as a principal. And, uh, like what's some advice you give? And I think I surprised her. Cause I said, when, 
like it's okay to close your door sometimes and just do things that you need to do because it's better to do that and like focus sometimes rather than have your door open say like come in at any time and then someone comes in and then you're just not present do you know what i mean you're mm -hmm. not in that yep. like you're you're there but you're not listening because that right. actually can cause some more issues so i used to like i used to say this to my to you know um my admin assistant uh no one comes in no one knocks on this door like don't knock on this door unless someone's dead or dying like i used to say that as like a like like it's gotta be an emergency right now mm -hmm. i gotta like focus on this thing right now there's i'm not talking to anybody i just need to do this thing yeah and i found that gave me some sanity and it was like i was a very like i was in classrooms all the time i was always you know outside of school every single morning but i i did like the i think the the door the door is always open can actually be in it this can be an issue i yeah. think that i think sometimes i struggle with like we have to be there a hundred percent for every kid every single day. I think sometimes is an issue because mm -hmm. some days the best thing you can do is just to say like, today's not a good day. Let's start again tomorrow. As it, like, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes you get in uh, an argument with your partner and sometimes the best thing is just to, to go to sleep and start again tomorrow. <laughs> do you know what right, I mean? Like, right, like maybe, right. I'm, maybe I'm wrong there. Right. But like thoughts on that, like, you know, cause I yeah. think your advice is like, your door should always be open and do everything for everybody all the time. And then we're, and then we're like, how come so many princes are leaving? I'm like, maybe cause we're telling them that they can't like ever breathe. Yeah. And it's eye opening as, as I reflect on this a little bit of like that, that feeling of like, you don't even know when, you, when you're depleted. Um, yeah. cool. and, and there's times where I'm just like, how am I doing this? Like, am I really that depleted? And I've noticed even just getting sleep, right? Like you go to right. sleep, I, I go home, still checking emails. And then I'm like, you know what? Tonight I'm just going to bed, right? I'm closing the computer at nine o'clock. I'm going to bed. And then that next day, that whole day was super productive. And I was like, whoa, was it because I went to bed a little bit earlier? And right. so I started this pattern and I started to realize like, oh, this is a thing. Uh, my, uh, my staff knows like, man, my door, like, come talk to me. You need something? Like, come on down and talk to me. And I also don't want it to be I'm telling you my door is open, but you've made it all the way from one end of the building right. to my office and my door is closed. Like, what do you mean I come talk to you at all the time? So I think there's a balance where yeah. I, I hope that people understand that I'm not intentionally just pushing you off or just closing the door and wanting to shut you off from, from us connecting. But like, I'm human too. I, yep. I got yep. the guy. I, I have made the decision to be a principal. I've made the decision to lead a large school. I can go lead a small school if I want to, but this is what, this is the, 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 the deck of cards that I have in the hand that I've been dealt. And yep. while I, I enjoy seeing those cards, sometimes those cards, I'm like, man, I got to play that a little bit later. You know what yep. I mean? Like I, because I need to be present to make good decisions, right? If yep. kids are at the, at the center of my decision-making, I need to have a clear mind so I don't mess up for them. Right. And then what trickles down is, again, being able to support teachers. I want to get around to all my teachers and see them every day, just like I see kids. Yep. But I know that I can't, you know, and I just hope that they I think the hope is that they understand and know that the intention is good and being intentional uh, about me setting time to say, OK, I was able to do this for myself and I respect that. Now, on the other side, let me be intentional about, hey, don't knock on my door unless somebody's dead or dying. Hey, I'm going to be out in this building. Don't call me back to the office unless somebody's dead right. or dying because I need right. to go in classrooms and see teachers. Right. Like there's a balance. Yeah. And the, it's funny because you said, you know, sometimes like, you know, like sometimes I hit bed at night. If I'm having a rough day, it's like a seven. I'm hitting, I'm like, I, the sooner I get to sleep, the, the, the more I get rid of this day. Right. And I, I have those days sometimes like, and I think that's, that's important. Uh, I don't know what you, there's something that you said that really made me think. And it's like, I think like you were talking about, you know, like, like really kind of about principles, like we're human and stuff like this too. I, I can say this now I'm not an administrator, but one of the things that I hated people saying to me was that's why you make the big bucks. And it was like, uh, and it's like when they would say <laughs> something like that and, and it was like, 
it would always come after like a really dehumanizing conversation to me. So I'm like, really like something like, and I'm like there, I don't make enough money that you can actually talk to me in that way. Right. Like that's not okay. Right. So like, I can I get it when those conversations, like sometimes mm -hmm. you got to make hard decisions and I get that. So that that's fair. But sometimes that, that response was used when it was like something just hor like horribly like that I would never be okay with a, a kid saying to another kid. And they're like, well, you get to be treated like crap. And I'm like, no, no, nah, no, that's, that's actually, I'm not, I, you don't, um, it was that, like, I know I, I mentioned refing yeah. before, but one of the things that was taught to us when we were refing was don't put up with like people screaming at you, like in a game, because you would never do that in your place of work. Do you know what right. I mean? So it was yeah. like, you know, but like we're, we're conditioned, like, no, we can actually be crappy to referees. We can like treat people like crap because that's why they get paid the big bucks. It's like, don't, uh, that, that's not an excuse to like treat someone horribly. No, and I don't know not. what, yeah, I saw you had a reaction to that, but like, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I'm not, I'm sure that's not just a Canadian uh, saying that we have, but like, have you, have you felt that before? Like, have you heard that? Man, saying? I hear that saying more than anything in the world right. from parents, from yeah. teachers, from people who have not like, that's why they pay. Like, this I want to, I want to know who made that up. I, I, I don't know. The one, it, it takes me back. I, and the reason yeah. I had that reaction, it took me back to one day. Uh, somebody came to me and like, I, I, yeah, sometimes I wear my emotion on my sleeve, but this day I'm just like, all right, cool. Like this, we got yeah. a lot going on, but man, some, I'm a positive person. Naturally, like I do not go out and wake up and be like, you know, I'm going to be bad. How can I mess up somebody's day today? Like that is not right, what I want right, to do. Right. But uh, it was one day, man, we uh, we had called the ambulance three times to our building to transport kids for social emotional needs. Um, we had a couple of um, physical altercations, right. which is not in our community, uh, just not a norm in our community uh, and a bunch of other little things that just happened. And of course, being a principal, like I have to know about all of these and I have to like I have three students who we are trying to make sure are mentally and physically safe right now. Right. And the stress and it was something so trivial that happened. But between two people and it was just like, I'm just putting this at your table. I don't have a solution, but that's why they pay you the big bucks. And I'm just uh, like, right. do you know what I dealt with today? And you bringing right. this to me, telling me like this is what I got to deal with. I was right. ready to unload. <laughs> Right. But in my head, I'm like, because I'm unloading because I'm human. You know what right. I mean? But like, don't, don't I hate that. Don't come and tell me that because the stuff that I have to deal with, I genuinely, yes, I signed up for the job. Yes, I agreed to the payments that are coming into my right. bank account to support my family. But the right. stuff that school leaders have to deal with on a regular day sometimes is life and death. And if right. I put a price tag on the decisions that I make, for kids, that's a life or death situation, and I need to lead a profession, yeah. right? Like, yeah. the, I'm making a decision that can either can save a child's life, yeah. and that is priceless to me. I don't care who has to make that decision, but that's not fair. Don't put that on my head to be like, well, you they pay you to do that. No, nobody pays me to do that. Yeah. I want, and, and so I, it as you can tell. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> it it <laughs> gets me a little fired up. I I'm hate that. And, and if you use it, and I'm going to challenge people to not, uh, regardless of whatever role yeah. you are in, I will challenge you to never say that to a school leader or to anyone in a in a position of power to make a decision because you don't sit in that seat <laughs> yeah. to know exactly what they're going through to be able to make a statement like that, to be joking or to say, that's my out to say, you make the big bucks, you make the decision. Cause you just never know what's going on. Yeah. And, and like, Sorry. like I, I no, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you unloaded. I'm, I'm glad. Cause I, cause then now I felt like I'm not alone because there, there's a very big difference between, Hey, this is probably not a decision I can make. And you know, Marcus, like you're the principal, I got to lean on you here versus like, suck it up. You, you know, this is, this is what you signed. Cause it, cause that there's, there's a way that it becomes like dehumanizing to the position. Right. That mm -hmm. is, it's just not cognizant. Like, you know, like I'm sure you're the same way. Sometimes we make decisions that are really tough to make. Like you were talking earlier about sometimes you make decisions that aren't 
you know, especially in a school, the school, your size, there aren't going to be a new, and it's not like you just like, well, suck it up. Everybody, you sit with it, you struggle with it, just mm -hmm. like teachers do. Um, you know, and I, I just, I feel it's, it's kind of like, you know, probably, you know, well, that's taxpayer money that you're doing. So you kind of do it like, it's like, no, this is not like, we're not trying to ruin anyone's life. Yeah. We're making some times we're making really tough decisions. And so uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to reverse this because I want to talk people into leadership. So I'm going to actually like go this other way because <laughs> there, there is like tons of rewarding things. Like I, I, yes. out of all the jobs I ever had, principal was my favorite job. I, I like, I, and I worked at central office. I, I love being a vice principal. I, I love being, a I love being a principal. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And it is tough um, to see a lot of people don't want to go into that position. And I'm hearing more like there's teacher mm -hmm. shortages, but I hear there's principal shortages too uh, all over North America. So somebody who's like kind of thinking about it, you know, and like there's, 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 there's positives and negatives to every position. But mm -hmm. if you're talking to someone who is like just kind of on that tip that they might want to go into like school administration. Like what would, what would you like, how could you like sell them on that? Like that here's, here's like why this is a, a great opportunity. I'm a, I'm a be clear and concise. First, I speak a lot about this on, on my podcast. Um, and like the episodes that I do, what, what's your, what's your podcast called? Unapologetic leadership. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Uh, yeah, man. I appreciate that. No, I talk a lot about this. And I, you know, when I talk to school leaders, I'm like, you know, if you could talk to somebody who's looking or like the story that you're talking about, if you could tailor this to somebody who's thinking about or they're in their first year, that's like, man, I don't know if I made the right decision. Right. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. Like there are there to be honest, there are more for me. There's more pros than cons to leading a building. Right. Like I get to make change on a very large scale by having that 30,000 foot view. But then I get a choice to say, you know what, I'm going to go and do this today. I'm going to go and sit with this group. You know what, I want to go on a field trip with these students or this group of students, or I'm going to go participate in some after school event. Like you get, you get the ability to choose a lot of things to go and participate in because you have a global perspective. Right. Uh, my wife always asks me, she's like, you know, you got to go to that. You got to go to that. It's like, yeah, I, I do. Nobody's telling me I have to. I get to go do it because I get to see kids at their best. Um, I've seen a kid who struggled like this is where they're successful. Like I get to go and be there because I know those stories. Um, um, the job is challenging. Yes. Not, hands down. Job is challenging. But uh, when I say it's it's rewarding, like you can look back on um you get to look back on what you've done over the years. I always tell my students and I tell staff like, man, what's your legacy? Like, what is the story right. that people are going to say, tell about you when you leave? They're going to say, yep, they got in the seat, they maintain and they like things just kind of stayed the same. Or we were able to do this. We had these awesome experiences just through the connections that we have. And we did that. You know what I mean? Like there's, you can create a culture that's defined by your vision and your mission to want to do great for kids and your staff. <laughs> like yeah. for me, that's my day-to-day -day mission. Like I get to go to work every day to do, to, to move forward in the mission and vision that I have as the principal set for this building. I yeah. want a building where kids are loved and cared about and they hear that. I can go say that and who's going to tell me, other than the superintendent, my boss could be like, all right, look, we need to go in this direction. But he gives me the ability to say, Marcus, like, this your building. Like, enjoy being the principal and craft that mission right. and vision that you want to lead. And I think it's paying off pretty well. Well, you know, like, as you're talking and like, one of the things that I really loved about being like a, a principal was I felt um, like, like a certain ownership over the success I, I hadn't yeah. felt um, maybe in the same way as a teacher. And I'll, I'll kind of pre I'll preface this in a way. The best principal I ever had actually helped me feel as a teacher that I had an incredible ownership over the direction of the school. And I, I felt that that's what, that's what made her such a good principal is that, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to say like, yeah, your class is important, but you affect tremendously the teacher across the hallway you affect, you know, tremendously kids that you don't teach and the interactions that we have like during supervision. 
Like this mm-hmm. is this these all of these kids, whether they're in your classroom or, or not, are your kid. And I felt like that principal who had that influence on me, that's something that I want. I didn't realize like how much you because like yeah, there is a there is a lot that kind of rides in your shoulders in, in that in that role. Mm-hmm. But I also think that if you can spread it out too, and when people feel like, hey, I, I'm making an impact on something bigger than than just than just what I'm doing in my class today, like on this whole school. And, and that has to be genuine too, not just yep. saying that, but putting people in positions where they do that. I think there's something, you know, really amazing about that. So I, I'm asking people this question. Um, you know, we, this is being shared in 2022. What's the best advice you got for people going into, you know, this new year? Um, you know, it's it, they always say like, <laughs> new year, new you, or or what have you, um, do something that's attainable and do something that's going to change the world. Um, we all live in certain spaces in which we have reach. Um, and if you do something that's attainable, people make, we were just talking about this the other day. Um, I was talking, sitting in the hallway, talking with some students about like new year's resolutions. And they were like, yeah, I don't make resolutions. Like, me neither, because they happen in January, February, and then they die out. But like if you do little things each day to create a habit mm-hmm. um, and that small habit can be something that can change somebody that can change the course or change the direction of how people feel like, man, that's awesome. Like if each day you can send one text message to somebody or say something nice to a group of people and you make it a habit every single day, like 350. 365 days out of the year, like that's 365 habits or opportunities that you had, you know, to engage in that habit uh, to be positive, but that's attainable. I just, Mm -hmm. I I can talk to somebody today, you know what I mean? And what are you saying? And what are you leaving with them? That's going to help them move forward. So it's, it's about what's, what's attainable for you. You know, there's a lot of people who have been shaken up by the craziness that's gone on in our world, this pandemic, social, emotional, and the, the civil unrest, things of that nature. Um, and I think that's, that's what it is for me. Like, stop right. thinking about what you're immediately going to start doing January 1st. I'm going to start working out January 1st. Yeah. But I'm gonna right. tell you by January 31st, you done, you hung up your gym right. shoes. Um, what's going to make the world better because we need more of that and less of the divisiveness. And so in the spaces in which you live in, in the school that I'm in, like I've started to get on this kick of just motivation. If I can drop one motivational quote or tweet or right. post something on our school, Instagram, whatever, like that's positive. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I, for people who are wanting to to do something, I think that that's it, man. Attainable change, small things. Yeah. As, as I'm listening to you and reflecting, uh, I made that comment about like, sometimes I go, you know, go to bed at seven, right? Mm-hmm. And I think the reason I, I've done that is, you know, I, I really, what you talked about is something I really try to do is like, what are the habits and the systems that I have in my life that help me to get to places that I want to be? And sometimes I go to bed early because I want to reset to the system that, you know, to like, hey, I know what I got to do. I just got to, I like, it's almost like I want to get to sleep. So I get back to that system quicker the next day. Do you know what I mean? And I actually yeah, say, yeah. I say that to my daughter sometimes. She'll say like, you know, like, oh, like, you know, yeah, like, I'm so excited for this tomorrow. I can't sleep. I said, if you go to sleep, you'll get to that point. It'll be way quicker to get to that point. And I kind of like, that's, <laughs> that's my little trick with her. And she was just like, that's, that's what puts her out. Right. And it's the same thing for me. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I just got to get back to like, today was, about, today was, you know, I, I kind of fell off of what I was trying to do, what I'm trying to achieve. I'm going to go to sleep early. I'm going to get back on my system because I know it works because I've been repeating it over and over again. So I, I love that advice. So uh, Dr. Beelan has been awesome to connect with you. I'm pumped to be on your podcast. And yeah, so, no, I want you to be. Yeah, it's going to be fun, right? And I'll, I'll bring the soundboard and everything. Yeah, I'll, I'll like download some sounds for you and stuff if you want me to. You know, no, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be awesome, man. I, uh, I would love to have you on. And the other thing, man, I, I, I want to say this and I appreciate just some of the stories and yeah. the pink guitar and bringing your daughter in. And yeah. I, I want to take a moment though, to give a, the biggest shout out to the people that ground me the most. And that's my family. Uh, my yeah. wife is always in my ear of just keeping me like, yo, come on back, you know, and yeah. my kids, yeah. Uh, doing the same thing. And and that's, that's for me going into the new year. Now that you talk about it, that's, 
that's another thing for me is is being intentional. You know, you just you yeah. talked about um, uh, uh, we talked about like the time that you get to see your parents, right? The story you, you yeah. know you had told about maybe thirty times if you only see them a couple of times a year, you know, and I, that that to me is value. You know, my kids, my wife, they live with me. Like, and and being a school leader, that's the hard part is finding that balance of like when to be able yeah. to shut it off <laughs> and to be in the moment and be with family. And I'm I'm. My goal for 2022 is to be more intentional about that because at the end of the day, all of the people who live outside of my house, I got to answer to the people in every day. So you know what I'm doing for family to the B lids. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, it was awesome to have you on the podcast. So I'm looking forward. Make sure you uh, check out Dr. B lids' uh, Twitter, his podcast below. Uh, The you'll see the you'll see probably by the time this airs, he'll have won seven more awards for stuff. So. Well, who knows? <laughs> it was awesome having you, man. Hey, thanks everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.